All right, this video I'm going to focus on properties of radicals. So our directions here is we're going to simplify each expression, and I'll show you fully what that means when we get down to it. So this first problem, we have the cubed root of 5 times the cube root of 50. So what the properties of radicals, what that does for us is whenever your roots are the same, meaning the number here is 3, numbers here is 3, so this is the cubed root, cubed root. Whenever these are the same, it allows us to do a lot of the operations and do some simplifying with radicals. For example, I have the cube root of 5 times the cube root of 50. So since these are the same roots, what I can do is I can actually do 5 times 50. So I can actually multiply the insides there. So that's going to look like 5 times 50. And that's only because these are the same root. Well, 5 times 50 is 250. Now here's the deal on a lot of, you know, you'll see on the ACT, the final, other tests, you know, you'll have a question like this and multiple choice answers, and this is typically one of the answers you'll see. Yes, if you simplify this, you do get the cube root of 250, but it is not completely simplified yet. Before we say we're done, we want to see and make sure, is this as simplified as possible? So we want to apply simplifying radicals, which is one of my previous videos, to make sure this is fully simplified. So what I'm going to do is, since this is the cubed root, using that table of powers, I'm in the x to the third column. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for 250 in there. So I'm going down, and I don't see it. So it's not a perfect cube. So what I want to do is I want to apply my properties, or sorry, my simplifying radicals ideas from that previous video, and I'm going to look for which of the numbers in this column, the largest number that divides into 250. Well, the largest number is 125. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this and break it down as 125. And I have to figure out, well, 125 times what got me 250? Well, 125 times 2. So notice I took these two radicals, put them together, and I'm going to separate them to allow me to uh, simplify it as much as possible. So I have the cube root of 125 times the cube root of 2. Keep in mind, I keep my cubes the same. So the cubed root of 125, using that table still, gets you 5. And the cubed root of 2, that is not something we know, so I'm going to leave it alone as the cubed root of 2. So this problem fully simplified, after you multiply together, kind of break it apart, you get 5 in the cubed root of 2. Next one, so I have the fourth root of 128 divided by the fourth root of 2. Uh, same idea with properties of radicals. Notice I have the fourth root divided by the fourth root. What that allows us to do is say, all right, well, since I'm dividing the two, I can actually divide the inside. So I can do 128 divided by 2. Well, 128 divided by 2, that's going to give me 64. So I have the fourth root of 64, but again, I don't want to just assume I'm done. I want to check and make sure this is fully simplified. So again, I'm going to go back to my table and go to, since it's the fourth root, I'm looking at the x to the fourth column. If you check, there is no 64 there. So I look for the largest number in here, see if there's a number that divides into 64. So obviously all these numbers bigger than 64 aren't going to work. If you try 16, it will work, so it breaks down into the fourth root of 16 times the fourth root of 4. Simplifying those, the fourth root of 16, we get 2. And the fourth root of 4, we do not know, so we're going to leave it alone. So we get 2 to the fourth root of 4 as our answer. And that is properties of radicals.